What's the worst second-hand embarrassment you've ever felt? Story 1. We were at an all-inclusive resort in Jamaica. Every night they had this common area where folks could do karaoke. A middle-aged gentleman got up and started the first few lines of Lionel Richie's Easy. Some random lady from the audience ran up and attempted to sing the song with the gentleman. He kindly pushed her away two or three times as she tried to sing over his shoulder into the microphone. Finally, she just stood there dejected, swaying from side to side like a dummy, as the man broke from his song and professed his love for his girlfriend and wrapped up with a marriage proposal. They hugged, they kissed. The silly lady went back to her seat. I will still never understand why that guy chose that song to use to propose. However, he was killing the vocals. Story 2. Was at a dinner party when my friend's mother-in-law asked another one of our friends when her baby was due. She wasn't pregnant. Anyway, mother-in-law should have simply apologized, but instead doubles down with something to the effect of, it sure looks like you're pregnant. Story 3. I was a server at an American restaurant and a family came in and the mother was berating everyone. She yelled at the server and complained about the food not being the right temperature and then she thought it was too salty, etc. She really had it in for the 17-year-old server. He was fine, but the customer wanted to pick at someone. Her husband and teenage children looked embarrassed. She had been like this before. There is a sign on the door that said we reserved the right to refuse service to anyone and management decided that this lady shouldn't eat with us again. So the manager went over and calmed the meals and told them to leave and not come back. The woman was upset and left a mean feedback. In response to the feedback, a regular posted with a picture of the woman and her family. She quickly took down her bad feedback. She deserved the public upbraiding, but I was embarrassed for her family. Story 4. That time my old roommate told a table full of his family that AIDS and cancer are the same thing. Just after talking about how much he's been learning from his night classes. Those classes were being paid for by his parents and spoiler alert, he wasn't attending any classes. They realized it by the time dinner was over. Story 5. A colleague of mine put in his two weeks. For context, he's a fairly attractive man. Well, this woman from HR, of all places, comes by his cubicle to wish him well, I guess. Anyway, she basically gives him a lap dance right there in front of the whole office. Story 6. Wasn't there personally, but it has since become a bit of a legend at the school. I went to and worked at a fairly large flight school attached to a university. We had a couple thousand people enrolled in the program that went all the way from zero-hour student pilot to multi-engine flight instructor, and on clear calm days you can guarantee that there would be a handful of student pilots doing their first solo flight. One student, having completed his two landings by himself, taxied off the runway and switched over to ground control and asked for clearance to taxi back to the ramp and complete his first solo flight. Ground obliged, gave him clearance and congratulated him on a solo well done. Solo student read back the instructions but for some reason forgot to take his finger off the microphone button. Anyone tuned into ground control could not only hear but could do nothing to interrupt or stop him as he sang a song of his own invention about how much he loved the aircraft he was driving. For three whole minutes, this poor guy serenaded the 50 or so pilots, ramp workers, air traffic controllers and flight supervisors with I love you Cessna, I love you Cessna, as he taxied back to the ramp. Eventually he realized he was on the air, took his finger off the button, enabling ground control got back on the frequency, and, over the howls of the tower cab crew laughing so hard it hurt, the controller thanked him for the song and would pass along the compliment at the next opportunity. Story 7. Had a guy walk into class in college late. It was an auditorium seating and the only open spaces were on the fourth row in the middle, about 25 rows in total and about 50 seats per row. This guy walks in and sits down, 15 minutes into lecture, and opens his laptop which as soon as the lights boot up starts blaring explicit content and at the build up to the big finale to boot. He couldn't log in fast enough or mute it since he wasn't logged in. So he slammed it shut, put it in his bag, and walked out with it still blaring at full volume. We heard it finally stop as he was about to leave the building. Story 8. I was going down an escalator at the Mall of Georgia when the 90-something-year-old guy in front of me very suddenly crapped his pants. We were about 500 feet from a bathroom and he was wearing shorts. I felt so bad for him. My dad gave him his hoodie to wrap around his waist. I was very proud he was my dad in that moment and still am. Story 9. 
when a colleague accidentally unmuted himself in a meeting and said something snarky about someone on the call. That particular call was being recorded too. Not me directly, but I had a colleague tell me he'd been moderating a work-related town hall meeting on Teams and the meeting was being recorded for publishing on the website. Some poor sod didn't realize his camera was on and took his laptop into the bathroom with him to continue listening while he took a dump. Since most people had their cameras off, his video popped up beside the presenters on Teams. Needless to say, the recording was quietly lost. Story 10. That lady who took out like half the Tour de France peloton with her silly sign. I only saw it on TV but that second-hand embarrassment reverberated across the world for me. If that was me I would be looking into planetary relocation. I can't imagine it. I still think back on it and feel a sense of relief that I have never messed up that badly before. Story 11. I went to an open house and there was this older realtor helping the listing agent. He was excitedly walking around this empty house talking about features while looking back at my husband and I. He ran headfirst into the chandelier that would be positioned over a dining room table had one been there. It happened so quick we couldn't even warn him. He got tangled in it and ripped it down as he fell face first to the ground, cutting himself up badly in the process. We both still cringe thinking about it. We saw him out at the supermarket recently and both whispered, oh no. Story 12. A new guy started at work and a couple of us were standing around just fooling around. A lady that also works there who is fairly rough around the edges walks by. The new guy then looks at the other guy we were chatting with and states, Dan, I feel bad for her husband. It was her husband we were talking to. Story 13. My uncle passed away midway through a contentious divorce from my aunt. Nobody on our side of the family liked the guy and we were happy she had finally dropped him. Turns out nobody on his side of the family liked the guy either, his adult children and parents included, and didn't seem phased at his death. My mom went to the funeral to support her sister and said it was the most awkward funeral she'd ever been to. There were only about 10 people who actually attended and the pastor running the thing had set aside 30 minutes for people to come up and share their positive memories of the guy. No one moved. Nobody was willing to say a good word about him. Instead the pastor awkwardly tried to fill the space with some general, everyone has value stuff, and then gave up and ended the service after 10 minutes total. No one in the family bothered to go to the graveside service either. Apparently they decided to go to a bar instead to get drunk and trash talk the guy. Story 14. I was ringing a girl and her boyfriend up and she was a few dollars short on her transaction. Boyfriend then got in my face and insisted her Red Bulls were buy one get one. It is true, they were buy one take one but the promo had ended months earlier. This man proceeds to yell and scream at me for 5 minutes about how she deserves these drinks and how dare I yada yada. This whole time his girlfriend was trying to disappear into the chip display like Homer sliding into that bush, just dying of embarrassment. Eventually after I threatened to trespass him, he gave me the biggest eye roll I have ever received and spat on the floor and told his girlfriend, let's get out of here, this dimwit clearly gets off on denying beautiful women what they need. His exact words. Story 15. I was selling some kettlebells on an online marketplace and a woman, early 40s maybe, bought them. She came to pick them up and as I handed them over to her, she obviously wasn't expecting them to be as heavy as they were, and as she suddenly strained to counter the weight, she ripped the most extreme of farts you have ever heard. It was gargantuan. I was shocked, but also proud. I'm usually pretty good at making light of any situation but I found myself speechless for the first time in my life. If I could, I would have returned surf but even on my best day I don't believe I could create such a symphony. We both kind of stared into each other's eyes and she said, well, and turned around and walked off. I think about her often. Story 16. I used to work at McDonald's. One of my co-workers was mopping the floor and some kid's mother made a comment to her child about getting a good job so he doesn't end up mopping floors yada yada. So my co-worker turns to her and says, just trying to pay for my mum's chemo. I'll never forget the look on her face. Keeping in mind that this guy's mum was not sick at all, he was taking the piss. If you've gotten this far and enjoying the content, please leave a comment of your own story. We'd love to make a video of them in the future. Story 17. A kid in boot camp crapped his pants. We were at the rifle range all day and they have to inspect every part of you to make sure you're not sneaking rounds back to the squad bay to shoot your gun with. 
so they told us to stand up, pull our trousers and skivvies down, and to turn around. One of the drill instructors go, what the heck is this? And instinctively we all turn and look to see this pale, skinny 19-year-old that has crapped all over his bottom and camos. I can't describe the humiliation and horror I felt. They made him march with his trousers around his ankles around the squad bay until our senior DI came out to see what was going on. I don't think I crapped for a week after that. It was like my body stopped producing it out of fear. We had 63 guys in our platoon and he was the only one who didn't graduate. Story 18. Was on the subway going home from work when I lived in New York City. I was sitting down in a three row and next to me was a two seat. A woman gets on the train and sits next to the window near me. Then a guy sits next to her. The guy tried to get her number but she said no. Before he knew it, the doors were about to close at his stop so he tries to run off but the doors closed. He sits back down in the seat he was at and everyone is staring at him. He tries to get her number again and she respectfully declines. He goes to get up to get off the train at the next stop and drops his phone and a bunch of his stuff. This is because his jacket was off and all his stuff fell out of his pockets. He then misses the chance to get off the train again. Before we got to the next stop he was trying to retrieve a few things that rolled since the train moved. He got his stuff and then got off the train. It was so freaking hard to watch this unfold. Story 19. A long time ago I worked at an airport where we had an office with a big glass tinted window through which we could watch the passengers and arrival hall going on. Three of us were sitting at the window doing paperwork. We were all so extremely tired after a long shift when one of the guys I worked with took a glance out and spotted one of our co-workers he didn't like through the window. He proceeded to tell us the most vicious rant, look at that fat yada yada. She looks like a warthog, just on and on with the most descriptive insults. Turns out, I guess being so tired, he had spotted her reflection in the window and she was actually standing behind us. It was just us three and her in the room. I freaking reversed out of that room so quick. Story 20. When I took my motorcycle training course to get my license, I sat next to an older woman, late 40s maybe, and she had a really hard time on the final practical exam. When we walked in from the parking lot after the tests, there was a room with a glass wall and a handful of the other participants were in there, scratching their heads looking at their test results. As we passed by, she mentioned how she wasn't sure how she did and she thought she failed. We sat down in the classroom and I tried to reassure her that the people who failed were pulled aside and that's why they were in the other room going over their results. Immediately after, she got a tap on the shoulder. It was the instructor. He was pulling her aside to go to the other room. She looked at me with big eyes and I shrunk. Story 21. A random acquaintance at a party seemed to be weirdly obsessed with my race and during every conversation topic he managed to make some bizarre joke about me being black. All the jokes fell flat. But after every joke he'd anxiously look at me and say, that's not offensive is it? Because I'm not racist. Laughed it off and managed to get away from him but he spent the rest of the night periodically coming up to me and saying, sorry about those jokes earlier, despite me saying it was fine and he just would not drop it. Everyone at the party had horrible second-hand embarrassment, including me. Story 22. Smoke break at a tech support call center. A really pretty girl asked anyone there for a smoke, and this pencil neck geek got her one quickly and insisted on lighting it. For the next 10 minutes he attempted to dominate the conversation because this was about him and her, and he now had some sort of a shot. We were all standing around a garbage bin with an ashtray on top. It was stuffed with bag lunches. The girl snuffs out her butt and tries to put it in one door of the garbage bin, but it's locked inside. The geek says, allow me, and launches into a strip mall karate kick. The biggest kick his 90 pounds can muster. The garbage bin goes over and the ashtray scatters wet sand, ashes and cigarette butts everywhere and on everyone. All the smokers took the last minutes of our break to pick up. The geek just stands there stiff like his willing time to reverse before the time he messed up and lost his true love forever. He stayed there even when the girl yelled at him to help. We finished cleaning up and left him standing there. Story 23. Bless my ex-girlfriend. She was a waitress and we were out to dinner with my parents. My mother pulls the trying to use an expired coupon move on the waiter. She simply refused to accept that time is a thing and that the written date had passed. 
While I zone out and wait for my mom to either win or be escorted out by management, my ex was apparently slowly losing her mind. She suddenly snatches the dollar bill-sized coupon from my mother's hand and eats it. Literally tore it and shoved the pieces in her mouth. She says that since there's no more coupon, there's no deal. It was nice, having the crazy chick be crazy on the staff's behalf for a change. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to Thread Talk for more content like this. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss out. Have a dope day and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers!